portion of this video was sponsored by Walgreens. Exposure has far exceeded dangerous levels. If they keep this up, there's gonna be nothing holding him back. Oh no, it's too late. Run, run! Goodbye, internet. Um, <clears throat> sorry about Antipad over there. He just escaped from his containment cell. Pay him no mind. He's kind of a minor glitch in the system. Pretty darn harmless, honestly. The scariest thing about him is just how cringy he is. Anyway, let's uh, let's try that again, shall we? <clears throat> Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that just wants to ask: Have you ever experienced a terrible occurrence that has impacted you significantly? Now, if you're a fan of our sister location, Game Theory, or spent any time in the gaming zone of YouTube, you're probably familiar with Sean McLaughlin, aka. Jacksepticeye. <laughs> Across his 10 years on YouTube, he's proven himself time and time again as a gamer, as an entrepreneur, as a philanthropist, but recently he's also been proven himself as a storyteller. Don't get me wrong, Sean has never been shy about hopping into character for one of his videos. Ah yes, welcome, welcome, welcome back. The good doctor services are needed yet again. Where's my wand? You can't be a magician without a wand. Where's my hat? <laughs> But now it appears as though Sean has something greater planned for those characters. A wider connected universe that brings them all together to tell a story of love, loss, and chaos. And it all begins with one. I've been here, here this entire time. Keeping an eye on things. The powerful and terrifying Antisepticeye. Recently, Sean released what has got to be one of his most ambitious projects to date, the Iris Project. An interactive live stream where the chat used text commands to cooperatively play a legitimate video game, solving puzzles puzzles and ultimately unlocking all sorts of new channel lore. The video itself follows one specific Sean character, Chase Brody. Now to catch you up in case you don't watch every single one of Jacksepticeye's Let's Plays, Chase is your typical bro. So much so that his spin-off YouTube series is called Bro Average. Yo, what's up guys? I'm Chase and welcome to Bro Average. But while on screen Chase is living large with teabagging trick shots, off screen he appears to be having difficulty with his family life. This one's called I'm staying at my sister's this weekend. Well, I don't care what your sister says. Just please at least let me see him at the weekend still. This escalates and ultimately it comes to a climax at the very end of a 2018 video titled What Do You Want From Me? In which Chase hears his family screaming. He goes to explore his house only to be confronted by another of Sean's characters, the unpredictable and violent Antisepticeye. Hey, what do you want from me? It appears that whatever happened here ended in tragedy because a year later we get the video simply titled Chase. In it, we watch as Chase approaches a makeshift grave and then places a photo of his family on it. They're dead, but who's responsible? Antisepticeye? Chase himself? Or something else? He begins to drink his troubles away until he's suddenly teleported to the top of a parking garage. And it's here, in an upload coming three years later, that the Iris Project begins in earnest, continuing the story of Chase, Antisepticeye, and presumably the rest of Sean's personas. Right now, that narrative is still in its early stages, but it's clear that Sean has big plans for it moving forward. I would assume the next installment's gonna be coming sometime either next summer or Halloween, based on how he's been treating these sorts of uploads in the past. But here's the thing, you don't need to wait that long, my friends. I think that we've cracked open what the wider story is. In their pursuit of discovery and technological growth, the Iris Corporation has gotten too ambitious. It's attempted to tap into forces that are far beyond their control. And by doing this, they've unleashed a force that threatens not just Iris, not just Chase and the other personas, but all of humanity. So grab your clipboards and start scribbling away, loyal theorists. It's time to dive in. Because the main part of this was a live event that's now unlisted, let me just start with a quick recap of what actually happened in the Iris Project so we're all on the same page. The videos from the live stream that the chat unlocked are framed as archival footage of a series of interviews between Chase Brody and an unnamed Iris scientist. I'm just gonna call this random scientist uh, a, a name that comes to the top of my head. Uh, let's just say Aaron. No real reason for that. Anyway, at first, the interview is more of an interrogation. Aaron seems distant and cold. Shots frame so he don't even see his face. He refers to Chase as a subject rather than a person. Subject has no recollection of spatial transition. Wait, excuse me? Subject? Aaron's questions also seem borderline nonsensical at first. Does Chase recall how he was teleported? Has he seen or heard things that weren't actually there? Seen objects appearing or disappearing? 
lost track of time, that sort of thing. However, as the days of the interrogation go on and Aaron attempts to warm up to Chase, we begin to see his face and his questions start getting more personal. Have you ever experienced a terrible occurrence that has impacted you significantly? Stop. Have you ever experienced a terrible occurrence that has impacted you significantly? Have you ever experienced a terrible occurrence that has impacted you significantly? Stop. Also, it becomes clear that Chase isn't alone in the facility. There's something else here too, something that wants to talk, something named Echo. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Who are you? Echo, are you there? Multiple times throughout the week, other unseen entities enter Chase's cell. These beings are what Iris classifies as alters, and they speak to Chase using what the camera picks up as some sort of strange whisper or whale noise. We can tell that at least one of them is tormenting Chase. No, 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 not this again. Please, please, please go away. And the other is telling Chase that he's special. Can you get me out of here? I don't understand. What do you mean I'm special? Eventually, after the chat unlocked all but one of the clips in the Iris Project livestream, the facility changed. The power started flickering on and off. Chairs were strewn about. Red warning lights blared throughout the building. The facility is in lockdown. Security guards enter Chase's room and escort him out as Chase warns them of the impending danger that they all face. Wait, we have to leave. I've, I've been here before. Please, let me go. Iris ignores Chase's warning, only to discover Antisepticai, here to once again wreak havoc on Chase's life. Hello, Chase. So, now that you're all caught up, the way I see it, there are three main mysteries presented to us here. What's Iris up to? How do Chase and Anti play into all of it? And finally, who or what is Echo? Well, I believe we have answers to all three of those questions today, but before we start decoding what it all means, let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor for this portion of the video, Walgreens. That's right, the drugstore that's literally everywhere noticed little old us online and sponsored this episode. We are legit, guys. This holiday season, if you're looking to keep yourself safe, you don't need to be locked up and isolated in a dark, high-security research facility. Instead, you can just make sure that you're up to date with your vaccinations. And thanks to Walgreens, it is easier than ever to do that. Most people think that you have to make a doctor's appointment, wait in line, the whole thing, just to get some vaccines. But you can actually have one of Walgreens' specially trained pharmacy experts do it for you. Super fast, no special trips to the doctor, you can book online, or, you know, you can just go in literally the same day. You can even save yourself a trip and schedule your COVID-19 and flu vaccines for the same time. Steph and I both take vaccinations seriously. We have a child who needs us to stay healthy. We do a lot of travel to see you guys and speak at events. We do our best to spend time with family at the holidays. And all of those things mean that we need to stay as responsible as we can in order to keep ourselves safe. Case in point, just a few weeks ago, our entire team came out to North Carolina to work together in the same room for the first time since COVID. There was a lot of hugging, a lot of jumping up and down, and then a lot more hugging. Honestly, for a bunch of introverts, Team Theorist is shockingly close. But you know what made all of those close hugs possible? Scientifically tested vaccines. And Walgreens makes it easy to access those vaccines quickly, reliably, and professionally. So go, get your vaccinations now, my friends. That way, by the time you hit the relative's house, gift swaps, or uncomfortable corporate mandated holiday parties, you're confident in your health and your safety. Schedule an appointment online today at walgreens.com slash schedule vaccine. Again, that's walgreens.com slash schedule vaccine. Or, you know, you can just click the link in the description if you don't want to type all of that stuff out. Be smart and safe this holiday season, loyal theorists. Once again, thank you to Walgreens for sponsoring that portion of the video. Let's just jump back into the mystery of Iris to decode what all of it means. Starting with the last question first, who is Echo? Out of all the entities that interact with Chase, this character seems to be the most benevolent. It wants to help. Wait, where are you? How, how can I hear you? Help how? Can you get me out of here? No, 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 don't say that. If both of us work together, we can get out of here. When Echo first appears, the Iris camera encounters some interference, and you can even see the silhouette of some sort of figure in there. Easy Money would say that that is Echo, but something else you might not notice here is that all throughout the rest of the interaction, the camera feed is glitchy, with Chase jumping around a fair bit. Now, this could certainly be a way to hide cuts to different takes, but it could also be a hint as to the identity of Echo. In the live stream, one of the rooms that we see appears to be some sort of Iris employee break room, and one of the posters on the wall reads, quote, Did you know? Alter 5914 is a time thief. Don't be like Alter 5914. So, since we're seeing some jumps in Chase's conversation here with Echo, maybe Echo is Alter 5914, an entity who's somehow able to manipulate time. And the glitches we're seeing aren't actually glitches, but rather time that's literally being stolen by Echo. Additionally, if we look at the Iris Twitter feed, we can see that some form of time manipulation does exist inside this universe. According to this 
this post about the retro wave, a microwave that rewinds old meals back in time to when they were fresh, Iris started experimenting with time manipulation technology in the 40s. So we know that it is possible within this universe. That alone would be an interesting factoid, but that's not all we hear about time travel in the series. One other post from the Iris Twitter got my theorist senses working. Quote again, if you were able to travel back in time and talk to yourself, what would you tell them? What if Echo is Chase from the future? Somehow traveling back in time to communicate and tell Chase that he's special, that he has a big role to play in this story, and that it can help because again, it's him from the future. It would be quite literally an echo of events yet to come. Now admittedly, that sounds like a big shot in the dark, but it would help a lot of things in the series make more sense. For example, despite Iris assuring Chase that he's never been in the facility before, he insists that he somehow remembers it. This building is familiar. It's like I've been here before. Mr. Brody, I assure you that you've never been to this facility before. No, it's it's not like that. There's an energy here that I've felt before. Sean also explained in his post-stream breakdown that deja vu is a scientific thing within this universe. It means something. So in this world, in this universe, deja vu has an explanation. It's There's like a scientific logic to why that happens, but... <laughs> I'll never tell. What if the deja vu is Chase picking up bits of his own memories? Memories that he hasn't made yet because they're Echo's memories. That would explain why Iris seems so interested in his feelings on the subject. But it's probably just deja vu or something. Have you experienced other instances of this? Like what? What do you mean? Like feelings like deja vu, like something's happened before. And time travel might not be the only dimensional technology that Iris is messing with here. I believe that a multiverse of some sort also exists in this world. In another Twitter post, Iris asks, quote, people only say reach for the stars because they think it's impossible to do so. What if we reached even further? The only thing I can think of that's further than the stars in outer space are places outside of our universe, in other universes. It might seem outlandish, but teleporting is established as a fairly regular occurrence amongst these characters. We've already talked about how Chase teleported to the top of a parking garage at the end of one of his videos, but he's far from the only person to experience this. First of all, Dr. Schneeplestein, Sean's wacky doctor character, witnesses an interdimensional portal through one of his computer monitors at the end of a 2019 video. That same portal is seen alongside the magician character Marvin the Magnificent in a vision from a 2020 upload. It's worth noting that both Antisepticeye and Chase are also seen in that vision, showing that all of these characters are indeed connected in some way. In fact, Antisepticeye himself has already directly interacted with both Dr. Schneeplestein as well as another character in the roster, the silent film performer Jameson Jackson. What if all of these characters are literally the same character, just from different universes, different timelines? And what's more, Iris clearly has an interest in these alter egos, with several of them likely already in containment within the facility. During the original livestream, we were able to see Jameson's bow tie, Marvin's mask, and several Jackie Boy Man comics hidden throughout the facility. Were these just easter eggs to Sean's other characters, or could these characters actually be kept in the facility? My hunch is that they're here for a reason. And if Iris has an interest in all of these other egos, then of course they'd want to capture Anti-Septicai too. Gotta be a completionist of the decks and all that. That chase is alter 114209. We've been tracking him for quite some time. But why? Why would Iris be so interested in collecting all these random characters from across time and space? According to Aaron, Iris is a benevolent organization that's just trying to protect people. So, you see Chase, Iris helped those people in that village. We saved them. We find items like those and we protect people from them. We're not here to harm you, we just want to help. But this frankly does not align with everything else that we see with Iris in the series. First of all, their treatment of Chase is borderline torture, to the point that they even make it difficult for him to sleep. Can you at least turn the lights off? Thank you! And despite already knowing the answers to the questions that they're asking a Chase, they decide to push him to the edge in a way that triggers horrible repressed memories. Have you ever experienced a terrible occurrence that has impacted you significantly? Notice the flashing images that appear here? Graves, bodies, a wedding ring? It's Chase's family, the ones that died, most likely at the hands of Antisepticeye. And the more they question Chase, the more they poke and prod at his tragic past, the closer Antisepticeye comes. Iris knows this and chooses to proceed anyway. Subject's exposure has increased to concerning levels. Suggest moving to second phase pending board permission. They want Antisepticeye to show up. They want him here, but why? What could they possibly have to gain from this super dangerous being? It can't be for the good of the universe, can it? To contain him? No, loyal theorists. They're doing it to harness the power that Antisepticeye holds. Despite this series taking place basically in the present day, date is October 18th, 2019. Iris has access to technology that's far beyond what we have in our universe. On their social media page, they talk about true high-definition TV in the 1970s. Implants that make you smart 
harder, microwaves that can reverse time on specific objects, and quantum displacers that can change the mass of objects. However, the piece of tech that we get the most elaborate explanation for is their watcher security system. These security cameras have incredibly high 12K resolution. They can detect both the physical health and emotional state of the people they record. And most importantly to our purposes today, they're wireless and batteryless thanks to an antimatter power source. Yeah, Iris apparently has antimatter technology in the year 2019. For proof, look no further than that Marvin the Magnificent video that I mentioned earlier. In it, we get a close up of a spell book. And what's that written inside? Iris equals antimatter. This is from a video that was uploaded back in 2020. So Sean's been laying the groundwork for years now. To my knowledge, this is also the first time that Iris was officially used in the context of this ongoing character narrative. Though if I'm wrong on that, feel free to call me out in the comments. But now we fast forward ahead to the more recent Iris project upload. In particular, one shot of the Iris facility from the original live stream. In it, we see what appears to be a pair of giant sci-fi power generators. I wouldn't be surprised if these puppies were running on antimatter. And suddenly, with all this information, everything starts to make sense. During the live stream, we saw a room that seemed to be designed to contain a powerful humanoid, someone like Antiseptikai. And while it's certainly a bit on the nose, the fact that the people clearly trying to summon Antiseptikai have themselves super futuristic technology that's powered by antimatter? Yeah, coincidence? I think not. Iris is trying to capture Anti and then use him as a power source. And so, they're triggering Chase, poking a sleeping dragon to get Antiseptikai's attention. And, uh, huh, well, that didn't turn out well for him. It's interesting. This entire project plays with the idea of how toxic social media can be. How people who have no real stake in something want to get involved with the personal lives of people that they don't even know. Sean explained as much during his live stream. Everyone online always has to have an opinion about everything all the time. In this way, the viewer is playing the game on the Iris live stream, and the Iris Corporation within the story are representative of people attempting to insert themselves into businesses that aren't really theirs. They're pressing people's buttons. They're poking and prodding all in hopes of getting a reaction. And things don't end up going well for them. Again, as Sean says, Consequences can happen to things that you didn't intend, but it's too late to kind of take any of it back. In universe, Iris seems to be doing this for selfish reasons, to capture Antiseptikai, to use him as a power source for their futuristic technology. And we, as an audience, are also doing it selfishly, to get to the next part of the story, to learn more about the people we follow online, to the point where we probably shouldn't. Regardless of whether I'm right or wrong about the story Sean's trying to tell here, and the lore of the world that he's building, I just want to take a step back and congratulate him on creating a universe that's so ambitious, and one that's so far outside of his normal content, including going so far as to make one of the coolest interactive live events I've ever seen happen on YouTube. For real, a clap and a half to Sean and all the developers at Hyper RPG for putting that one together. You know that I'm a big fan of content creators trying new things on their channels and pushing the limits of their creativity, so you can bet I'm excited to see where this one is gonna be headed next. So as always, my friends, in the meantime, remember, it's a fact, a film fact. <laughs> D did you really just say and glue? As in, you were just looking for the opposite of and cut? Yeah. Now, see, this, this right here is why we can't have any good lore for the channels, alright? Sorry.